Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update. Leave a comment below to help grow the channel, and don't forget to smash the like button. Okay, lecture two, addition and subtraction. So we're going to go through the basic operation of addition and subtraction for multi-digit problems. Last time we covered single-digit addition and subtraction, and I recommended either using addition and subtraction facts or recognizing the patterns uh, involved in skip counting to be able to easily add and subtract any one-digit number. So let's just begin with a problem, 62 plus 35. Now, we also talked about place value last time, and so the first step in doing any addition problem is to align the numbers vertically by their place value. So I begin by writing 62, and then on the next line, I'm going to put 35. This section here will be where we place our answer. The plus means that we're doing addition. So notice that 62, which has two ones and six tens, we line up the two ones from 62 with the five ones from 35, and we also line up the six tens from 62 with the three tens from 35. That's important. Writing your problems out neatly will greatly aid in getting the right answer uh, and make this pretty straightforward. After that, all we do is column by column, we add these things up. We always go from right to left. And so our first column is two ones plus five ones. Well, we can think about that as either five plus two or two plus five using your multiplication facts, or we can use one of the techniques from the previous lecture. For example, we could start at five and go ahead by two. Let's skip counting by two. After five comes seven, so five plus two is seven. Then we move on to the next column to the left, six plus three. Well, we might recognize it skip counted by three. We can use the telephone sequence to go from six to nine, or we can use the multiplication fact six plus three equals nine to write down our answer, nine. And so 62 plus 35 is 97, and the answer is right down here. Let's try another one. Let's try 27 plus 45. Again, we line up each number vertically by place value, and then we add column by column starting on the right. So the first column we have to deal with is 7 plus 5. Now, 7 plus 5 is 12. And the problem is, is that you're not allowed to write more than one digit in the answer section in this column. So how do we write the number 12 without taking up more than, without using more than one digit? Well, that's easy. We're going to have to carry 10 from that 12 over to the next column. We write it like this, and we just write the 2 from 12 here in the answer section. Then we move on to the next column, and we add up not two numbers, but three. So we have 4 plus 2, which is 6, plus 1 is 7. And we have our final answer, 72. So you can kind of think of this as, you know, again, it's that funny money police where you're not allowed to have more than nine of the same bill. And so whenever we had 7 plus 5, we would have had 12 $1 bills. We have to trade one of those, we have to trade in 10 of those $1 bills for a $10 bill, giving us one $10 bill plus two $10 bills plus four $10 bills, uh, and we would have two $1 bills still available to us, you see? Let's uh, let you try one. So what I suggest doing is you take a crack at this problem, uh, you pause the video if you're at home, and uh, then we'll resume and I'll work it out for you. So let's do 6,354 plus 1,826. 1,826. And I've already kind of set the problem up for you by aligning them vertically by place value. So pause the video now and uh, try this at home. Okay, so we already have this written out vertically and aligned by place value. So we start on the rightmost column, 6 plus 4 is 10. So immediately you see that we must carry the 1 from 10 over to the next column, leaving the 0 from 10 here, because we had to trade those 10 $1 bills in for one $10 bill, leaving us with no $1 bills, hence the 0 here. Now we add up the numbers in the next column. 5 plus 2 is 7, plus 1 more is 8. That one is easy. 
Then we move to the next column, 8 plus 3. 8 plus 3 is 11, which means we're going to have to carry again. So we trade in 10 from that 11 to get another in the next, and I know it's not the tens place, this is the thousands place, so this is really, we're trading in ten hundreds for one thousand in our neighboring spot, our neighboring column, uh, leaving us with just one hundred left over. Now we move to the last column, six plus one is seven, plus one more is eight, and we get our final answer, eight thousand one hundred and eighty. And you can put a comma in here to separate uh, the thousands place from the hundreds place, that's very common and can aid in looking at the numbers and recognizing the place value. Subtraction works very similar to addition. And you might know that subtraction is, of course, the kind of the opposite of addition, such that if I were to stack 10 blocks and then unstack 10 blocks, that's kind of taking 10 minus 10. 0 plus 10, that's stacking 10 blocks. 10 minus 10 is taking away 10 blocks, and you'll be left with nothing. Um, it's also called an inverse operation. So subtraction is the inverse operation of addition. But it does work a little bit differently, but we begin the same. Let's try the problem. Let's subtract 15 from 76. Now, the first question that comes to mind when you hear that is, what are we going to do? Are we going to do 15 minus 76 or 76 minus 15? So you have to figure out what the proper ordering of these numbers are because that's important. So in this case, subtracting 15 from 76 is the same thing as 76 minus 15. So let's write the numbers like this. Write them, align them vertically by their place value just like before, but make sure that you get the order right because this would be different than 15 minus 76. This time we'll put a minus sign over here to signify that we're doing a subtraction problem. And like before, when we did addition, we're going to start on the rightmost column and we're going to work column by column until we're done. And our answer will accumulate down here in the answer section. So 6 minus 5 is 1. I'll write the 1 right here. 7 minus 1 is 6. I'll write the 6 right here. And so 76 minus 15 is 61. Let's try another problem. Let's try 43 minus 27. 43 minus 27. So again, we'll start in the rightmost column. 3 minus 7. Well, we can't do 3 minus 7. If we have 3 apples and we try to take away 7 apples, what do we do? We're going to do something very similar to what we did with our carrying when we did addition. We're going to do something called borrowing, okay? Because we only have three, let's imagine this is money again. We only have three ones, we've got to take away seven ones. Well, can't take away seven ones from three ones. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to borrow, because we've got four tens, right? So we can borrow one of those tens, giving us ten more ones for a total of thirteen ones. So we'll borrow one from here, we'll strike out the four, and we'll decrease it to a three. And we'll put a little one up here to signify that we've added ten ones to our, our pile. Now we have thirteen minus seven. Now that we can do. And through multiplication facts or patterns, you'll recognize that 13 minus 7 is 6. Then, like before, we move over to the next column. Now we have 3 minus 2. Well, that one is easy. That's just 1. And our answer, 16, is here in the answer section for 43 minus 27. Now let's give you a chance to try one at home. So let's consider the problem 731 minus 658. Feel free to pause the video and try this one at home. Okay. Since we already have things laid out vertically and aligned by place value, we'll start in the rightmost column and we'll look at 1 minus 8. We recognize we can't do that, so we're going to borrow 10 ones from our neighbor, not forgetting to strike out the 3 and replace it with 1 less than 3, which is 2, and then add our 10 ones here. So now we have 11 minus 8, which is 3. Ah, but here we have 2 minus 5, so that's a problem. We're going to have to borrow again from our neighbor. So this time we're going to borrow 100, reducing our number of hundreds from 7 to 6, and we're going to add the 100 back here. So now we have 12 tens minus 5 tens, which is 7 tens. And we move on to the final column. 6 minus 6, that's 6 hundreds minus 6 hundred. That's 0. And we write the 0 here. But we don't really need to write a 0, because leading zeros don't really make a difference. 073 is the same thing as 73. And so that completes that problem. Uh, next time we'll talk about multiplication and division facts uh, and patterns as well. So we'll do, go over some easy ways to do multiplication um, and then we'll follow that up with how to do multiplication in long form.